everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to take a look at, oh, kind of a beginner sort of subject, uh, how to connect wires together, uh, connecting them end to end, uh, putting eyelets or other terminals like Anderson's on the end of them. We're also going to take a look at this new fangled styled uh, butt connector that supposedly solders without a soldering gun. We're going to talk a little bit about soldering. So we're going to cover a lot of stuff. Um, you know, if you already are competent at doing Anderson connectors and competent at soldering and butt connectors and doing all your wiring, uh, this video probably isn't for you. But if you've ever wondered how hard it is to solder, if you no one's ever really given you info on the right and the wrong way to solder, well, check out this video. Anyway, oh, would you please click subscribe down below if you like the stuff I do. And uh, by all means, click the little notification icon so you get an email when we come out with these things. With that, let's go ahead and get on with the show. Well, hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Uh, today I want to talk about crimping and soldering. This seems to be a really big subject for a lot of folks out there. And um, a lot of questions I get are things like, well, should I just crimp? Is that good enough? Do I need to solder? And that's a super loaded question. Um, a lot of it depends on a lot of different things, so let me go ahead and change the camera angle where I can get a good shot of the workbench. Uh, I just wanted to show my soldering station to you folks. Uh, basically, we have a uh, Weller uh, soldering iron right here, which you're going to see more of later in the video. And I have a uh, surface mount heat uh, gun that's designed to do surface mount uh, soldering work. but. Uh, we're just going to use it as a heat gun today when we're doing heat shrink stuff. Anyway, let me get the camera angle changed and we'll be right back. Okay, well, we've changed our cam camera angle. My name is Stu, AG6AG, and uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the different connectors here. So these are all butt connectors. And all a butt connector is, is it's designed to connect two wires end-to-end, -end, butting them together. That's why we call them a butt connector. Uh, oh, I snuck in an eyelet connector. Now, these are different styles, so just be aware of that. You have, of course, your heat shrink crimp-on butt connector. And these also come in eye connectors, and you can buy these. Uh, these happen to be 10 to 12 gauge because they're yellow. Um, these are the insulated butt connectors. These are very common in automotive. Um, I'm going to say one thing about these. I don't use them. Um, I don't use them by themselves. They tend to pull apart a little bit easier than I want them to. Um, and if I can pull them apart, you know, that might just mean there's not enough contact there. Um, in an automotive environment where you have lots of vibration, it isn't always a bad idea not to solder. Uh, however, there's arguments on both sides of that, so just be aware of that. Um, I typically, though, don't use these particular adapters when I'm dealing with ham radio, amateur radio wiring. Okay, So, we're actually going to start by using one of these connectors I never use to demonstrate a point I can theoretically it's always easier when I do this because demoing this is never ever good but usually I can pull them apart like so and be able to use them as non-insulated connectors that I can solder and then put heat shrink on. And that's what we're going to do. I do have a project where I have to do that right now. So I'm just going to take the two of these. Pull them apart. 
correct that angle. And now we're going to use them. Get rid of some of the trash I have here. So, step one is I have a wire connector that I need to put these ends on. So, let's go ahead and we'll strip this back. By the way, I should probably talk a little bit about the tools of the trade. Uh, this is a dedicated stripper. Uh, that's all it does is strip wire. Uh, it doesn't crimp. It doesn't do anything like that. Uh, so, but let's go ahead and use this just to strip these wires real quick. Get enough back, you know, so I'm getting enough back to get it in. That's all I'm really concerned about, right? I just want to get enough of it so I can get it in there. Just like that. All right. Now, I need to set myself up here to... Uh, Make sure these don't run away from me when I'm trying to solder them. Also, I need to do one other thing. I need to put some heat shrink on here. So let me go ahead and cut off a little bit of heat shrink. Right there. And uh, there. Okay. slide the heat shrink on. If I don't do this before I put the terminal end on, I'll need to go with a bigger piece of heat shrink and uh, may not get it quite as tight as I want it. So, need to be careful of that. Alright, so step one for me is always to get these crimped on. So, I'm going to use a tool that's designed to crimp uninsulated connectors, which is this. We're just going to pop that in there, crimp that down, and that's just going to keep that from running away from us when we solder it. That's the only purpose of that crimp. Going to do the same thing on this one. Like so. And we come out a little bit. There we go. Crimp that down. All right, and that's not going to be, hopefully, going anywhere while we try to solder it. And then in comes the next task. So, I know a lot of guys that will sit here and do it while it's just hanging out in midair. I'm not good enough. I admit it. I need to be able to get something to hold it for me to do it. While we're waiting for my soldering iron to heat up, Let's talk a little bit about the tools of the trade. You just saw me use a heavy-duty crimping tool that are designed for non-insulated crimps. This is kind of an all-in-one stripper, and this has a crimper to be used with the insulated terminals. Okay, I don't like using it, but uh, when I have to use them, I have to use them, usually in an automotive application. Uh, of course, you need a pair of dikes right here. Very important tool to cut your wire. Make sure it's straight. And I showed you the uh, the crimper right here, or excuse me, the uh, stripper. I happen to like using a dedicated uh, stripper because they tend to be, the tools that you buy that are dedicated for one purpose tend to be a little better quality at what you want to do. Looks like my soldering iron's heated up though, so we can start with this. Um, if you don't do any start, uh, soldering now, I encourage you to pick up a soldering iron at your uh, local uh, hardware store or order one online. Um, soldering can be intimidating if you've never done it, but it's something you really want to learn. Now, soldering, I basically tin the tip of the soldering iron, like so, and then I place it on the top here. And you see how the solder is now running? We call it running because when I put the solder on, it runs into the wire. That's what I'm looking for. And that's really it. Not a lot of solder on that at all. And what I'm hoping for is I'm hoping that this didn't wick too bad. 
kind of hot, so I don't want to burn myself. Now, wicking is when the solder goes back into the wire. Okay? Uh, what we really want is we just want to solder that terminal, but the reality of it is that, you know, we've got a lot of heat here. Notice that I'm retinning my soldering iron. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the saw. There, you see how it just banged, just like that? All right, so I'm coming up here, and I'm going to... All right, and I'm looking now. I see some solder moving into the wire, and that's what I'm looking for. I want that solder to flow into the wire. I don't want it to wick too much to go down to the end of the wire. Okay, so these need to cool off just a little bit before we do the heat sink. Heat shrink. There we go. I knew I knew how to use that word. Alright, so yeah, you just didn't wick too bad. I've got wicking up to about here. I, I don't like that, but I can live with it. I've, I've had it wick all the way back to here by just using uh, too much solder. So, uh, the hope here... Uh, did I not get a big enough piece? Yeah, i get it on there. It'll go. There we go. Come on, just a little more. Come on. I don't really worry about pulling on this too hard because it should not come apart. All right, there we go. That's what I was looking for there. Now let's see how we do on the other side here. Hopefully it'll be a little easier. Oh, yeah, this is much easier. Okay. So there we go. I have my heat shrink in place. Now all I got to do is pull out my heat wand here. This is actually a tool that's designed to be used to uh, work with surface mount uh, chips on circuit boards and just basically heat them enough to uh, unsolder them and then using special solder flux you can resolder them. Uh, I use this, believe it or not, mostly for what you're seeing right here. Nothing more than just using some heat sink. Heat shrink. Heat shrink. I'm going to write that word down so I don't forget it. Heat shrink. I don't know why I keep misquoting that. All right. And there you go. You saw a real live wire repair right there in front of your very eyes. Not too hard. Uh, and again, if you're afraid to solder, okay, don't be. Don't be. Go out and just get yourself a soldering, uh, soldering iron and some solder and play with it, okay? That's really all you have to do. So that's an example of repurposing some of those uh, insulated connectors. Um, and why do I want to repurpose it? Well, hey, look at this. This is a $15 or $9 or $12 assortment of these connectors from uh, Amazon. And to be honest with you, they're in the ham radio environment, just not reliable enough to be cleansed. And that isn't because they're super cheap. It is just because of design. Okay? Anyway, we got this all set to go. Now, let's take a look at... Um, another type of connector here. I am going to show you the butt connector, which is a crimp connector, but this is a heat shrink butt connector, so it makes it a lot easier to use, a lot better to use. All right, so there we go. I got a couple pieces of wire here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strip the ends of these. These are 12 gauge wires. Actually, they're 10 gauge, but they say they're 12, but they really aren't or they say they're 10, but they really aren't uh, because wire is what we call zip wire. comes out of China and, uh, you know, bottom side of the specification, right? So now we got these stripped. All I need to do now is I need to go ahead and crimp them. And I'm going to do what's called a no-no. I am going to use my uh, crimping tool here, which is basically designed for non-insulated connections, but it does a better job crimping 
and to be honest with you it doesn't damage the heat shrink that's the most important part by the way you don't want to damage the insulation and since really all that's holding this together is the uh, uh, the crimps here you know you want to be you want to be reasonably careful when you're doing this that you get a really really good tight connection all right, so we're going to just lightly inspect this uh, because a lot of what's going to hold this together, believe it or not, is going to be the heat shrink. Let me get the wand out again and we'll heat this baby up. Now the big plus to this is that this also makes the connection waterproof, okay? You're never going to be waterproof uh, completely on something like an eyelet connector although you can get close you're you know you're not going to be a hundred percent there but it's not going to let the corrosion in any more than any other connector and that's the winner there now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the colors on this to change I want it to see how it's kind of turning into I, I notice that all the air is gone See, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for all that air being gone on the connector. Um, by the way, this particular device that I'm using is set for 450 degrees centigrade. So uh, you don't want to get your hand in front of this for too long. All right. And there we go. Just like that. Now, um... We just wait for that to cool off, and then we can run some serious tests on it. All right. Let's see. What else did I want to show you? Oh, okay. I wanted to show you soldering just like this, okay? So let's go ahead and, uh, you know what? I'm going to take the other end of this, and I am going to make a solder connection on this side. How's that sound? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and strip this back just like we did before uh, for the butt connector size like so and like so all right now we're going to use a different you know what so here's a great example I want to make these kind of the same length I don't have to but I know this one is a little short and if you're wondering how long these are, uh, you know, eyeball about a half an inch, okay? Now, what was it that I said about making sure that you get um, your uh, heat shrink on before you do this? <laughs> Very important. And with that, you need to kind of calculate out double the length here of what you're going to need, okay, when you do this. Uh, usually I have a pair of scissors close to me. I actually don't in this case, so I've got to use these giant cutters, but they work. And let's go ahead and we'll slide this in. Notice how big this is. Uh, this will shrink to this size wire. Uh, it is actually designed to be three to one, so it'll shrink down to about an eighth of an inch, which is great. All right, so I am now using the 1012 uninsulated butt connector and I am again I am going to crimp this just like I did with the other one just like so and I'm looking in here I want a little bit of exposure of the wire I want to see that wire right there we go and just like that okay and then we'll do the same thing over here with the other end make a little frisbee loop here. How's that sound? Oh, and you want to get all the wires in. <laughs> it can be challenging sometimes. I know that. But you want to get all the wires in there. Now, I'm kind of looking at this and I'm going, if I look down at this end right here, I can see how much wire I got coming out. And that's probably just about right there. Just like that. Now, if I don't feel like I'm really getting a strong crimp in there, it really doesn't matter. You know why? Because 
basically, I'm going to be soldering this, so it doesn't really matter. I can also, you know, kind of bend it a little bit, do a little of this, maybe, and a little of that, just to get it sized down a little to the width, right? All right, let's go ahead and clamp this back in. So, like I said, holding this myself and trying to do this is almost impossible. So, I'm actually... I want to look at the other side of this when I eh, let's just take it off of here. I actually want to look at this side of it while I'm soldering it. So I really don't need a path for it to run in this way. I want a path for it to go in that way. Now we make sure that we have a really, really nice, clean soldering tip here. And I'll move this over maybe to give you a little bit better angle on what I'm doing. Very important. You have to add some solder here. I want to make sure I got this straight. You have to add some solder to the tip of the soldering iron in order to get it to start transferring. What I'm looking for, I'm just going to do this. You see how it's starting to run on top of the connector. And now as I, oh, okay. I can begin to feed it here. Oh, all right. So I see that is starting to flow. Let's do the same thing on this side. We know that is starting to flow. Then, of course, I have a little extra solder on here, so I can tap that a little bit to get it off. But you can see how I've got good flow now inside to this capsule, right? All right. Now, let's take a look at this a little closer. All right. Uh, and I'm going to want to get some more flow on the other side of this. I'm not real happy with it. The solder joint. Why not? Because I don't see solder all the way around. Okay, so there we go. All right. And the same thing here. I want, want that to, ah, uh, there it goes. See, it starts to eat it up. That's what I want. I want that to start to eat it up into the wire. There we go. All right. Now I'm happy. All right. And that is hot. You notice I got a little spot of solder right there on the bench. And that is on the bench. There we go. Little scrape got it right off. But you don't want to be doing this on a nice piece of furniture. That is for sure. All right, so we're looking pretty good here with this. I'm just going to slide this over like that. Bring our temperature gun up to heat here. See how much that shrinks? That's a nice piece of heat shrink right there. All right. And there we go. Just like that. So, let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of these two connections. Well, they're both really strong. They're not coming apart if you pull on them. They're both watertight. Um, the electrical connection here is probably a little bit better. Okay? That's about the only difference. So, I'm going to show you one more thing that I think is important. This is a new kind of I don't know. I'm going to just call it a lazy style of adapter. And I'm going to show that to you next. Uh, it actually has, it's made of heat shrink with a solder section here in the middle that supposedly with a heat gun you can get it to melt. Okay? 
I I personally don't think that these connections work that well. Okay, um, I've watched people online on YouTube talk about them. I've seen the manufacturer demo them. Um, you know, they demo really, really well. Uh, but to me, I'm not really sure how well they work. So I'm going to have to set up for this a little bit. Let's go ahead and do our strip again. Again, we're going to go oh, uh, a little more than half an inch, right? I want to go a little more than half an inch here. Like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the connector on one side and just slide it all the way down like that. And we're going to try to do our meshing outside of the outside here. Come on. So, ah, well, that's not bad. Okay, I feel a little better about that connection. All right, so we kind of have it meshed together now. And they don't twist them or anything. They just say, yeah, mesh them together. That's plenty. Now we're going to go in here like that. And this supposedly is the setup that we're looking for right here. This blue section is the adhesive, that center section is the solder, and it's surrounded by heat shrink. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera for a minute, and I need to set up a different angle and a different piece of equipment. Alright, well, this is a real, real deal heat gun here. I'm going to kind of adjust it up so we can see the magic and I tried doing this back here with this little unit here and it just didn't work so now I am getting this set back up to the center like so there we go and uh, away we go You can see that we're starting to get a little bit of flow, just a little. You have to remember too that this heat gun is tremendously hot, okay? Tremendously hot. And I wanted to kind of come back and show the, uh, make sure that I had enough wire so you could see the solder flow or the lack thereof, okay? Anyway, all right, that's about it. I'm gonna shut this off, move it off to the side here, and we're gonna let this cool off a little bit. We're gonna put it in a position where you can see it better and I can give you more info. Okay, so I think I got my camera angle pretty much back and here is our little as it were, joint. Um, so let's talk about my opinion of this. So I can see in places where the solder is ran, but it really isn't great and complete coverage for the wire. Um, it is, uh, it is held together, um, but. You know, for all the trouble I went to to do this and the cost of these connectors, unless you're just absolutely terrified of soldering, I don't think I'd recommend it. Now, that said, hey, this is America, at least where I'm at, so you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Um, and... Hey, it may be a viable solution for you. I don't want to turn you off to it. I'm just, you know, compared to these connections, I just, I don't see it. These are much better. 
anyway. All right, so let's see, what else did I want to cover? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was going to do Anderson connectors. Right on. Okay. So, let's see what I got here. All right, so I've got an end here. We'll just cut it off even, like so. Now, what kind of Anderson connector am I going to use? Well, I guess the question isn't really what kind. It comes down to more of what size. So Anderson connector connectors come in three different sizes. I only ever buy two of them. Um, the 30 amp size, which is designed to take up to, uh, you know, you can squeeze a Chinese 12 gauge wire into this if you choose. Uh, but it's really designed for 14 gauge and under. Um, or their larger 45 watt or 45 amp connector, which, uh, you know, I, I've gotten 10 gauge wires into here. Okay, so it's, uh, I buy both of these. They also have a 15 amp one. This is a 30 amp, 45, and then there's a 15, which I don't typically buy. Um, in this particular case, since we're dealing with a 12 gauge wire, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use these. Now, these you really need, for these 45s, you really need the right crimping tool. I'm going to squeeze these down just a little bit. That's uh, a trick to get them to fit properly into the crimper, like so. That's a little prep work for you. Now we're going to take our wire and we want to open it up a little bit. Not much. We don't need much, right? About that much. I'm going to go ahead and strip the wires. Now, the wires don't need to be real deep here. Uh, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe that might be, even be a little long. Maybe about that long. There you go. Most important part here is I need to match what I do on the other side, right? Like so. So they're the same length, right? We want them to be the same length, right? And they're just off just a little. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fix that like that. There we go. All right. So which way do they go? Oh, man, that's always a question. And the only way I can remember it is... If you look at the connector, this side here, that's the side that connects to the other side. We'll call it the uh, uh, oh, uh, conducting side, okay? So with the conducting side up, red is always on the right side, okay? Black is always on the left. So I can remember red is right, and... Uh, we're good with that. I'm going to set this down for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and get my Anderson crimper. I've got the small ones, the 15s, the 30s, and here is the 45. And I want to put that in there and I want to move it to where it's just level with it. See how I got that in there? And now, if red is right, I have to position this with red on the right side here. And I'm going to put it in and crimp it down, just like that. Now, when I pull it out, look at what I got. I've got an excellent connection there, right? Do the same with this. I'm going to place this in the tool like so, to where it's flat and even. So I need to get this in like so. I want to make sure all the wires make it in there. And then apply the pressure. There it is. Okay. Now, 
believe it or not, I could solder this. But with the right crimper, and being that these are going to get wiggled around a whole lot, and I don't want to make it easier for them to stress break, I think I'm just going to go with crimping. I think that's my best choice. Um, you can certainly solder them. That's fine. Now, I need to get uh, a red one and a black one out. And I buy these, by the way, in bulk. I look for uh, special pricing, and I'll buy a bunch of them. Um, you know, but it's completely up to you and how you do that purchasing. Uh, now we're going to go ahead. We'll start with our red one here. And we know that uh, this has a little notch here down at the bottom side. We know that that means that the contact is going to go on this bottom side here. So there we go. And we may have to wiggle and push a little, but what we're looking for is that snap. See, if you look inside this, you're going to see a little metal spring. And that goes up under this lip. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're just going to push, and it's going to snap right in. Now the fun part. We're going to take this and get it in a position where it slides together on the notch, and there, you know what? There you go. Now you notice that this may shift positions, okay? That can happen. It's, it's not uncommon for that to happen. Uh, a lot of guys will put a plastic pin in here. Me, uh, you know, I don't ever have to take this back apart. So in this particular case, I might consider just sliding this open and dropping a little drop of super glue and pushing it back and letting it dry. But, you know, that's up to you. Uh, or you could just leave it be. I mean, it's it's not going to be too bad, but you can see the one on this end's shifting as well. So um, maybe we should glue them. Oh, and of course, these should go together, red to red, black to black, right? All right. You know what? I think we're going to call it on that one. We'll see how this comes out in the editor. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I really hope to hear you on the air. Well, hope that covered it for most of you. Um, I have to tell you that those self-soldering uh, butt connectors, eh, just I'm not that impressed. But you know what? Go ahead if you want and play with them. Let me know your opinion after you've used them a couple times down in the comments below. And of course, if you have any questions or anything that I didn't cover that you want to hear about, please go ahead and type me a message down there, will you? Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. With that, I'm Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. And my goodness, I hope to hear you out there on the air.